Uh, Lululemon doesn't have a lot of bread. Because <laughs> I'm looking at the store, I'm like, there's not a lot of bread in a Lululemon. There's not a lot of bread in the Gucci store, and yet everyone seems like, unless you're eating Gucci loafers, which you're probably not. But this is the insanity, you know, remember? Man, he really committed to that pause for laughter. As dear old Papa Trump's mind slowly unravels, so too do his children's. I mean, what was the joke even supposed to be? There's no bread in a Lululemon? I can see making a joke about lemons? I mean, I guess I understood the bit about the loafers, you know, like, loaf of bread. Ha ha ha. But the Trump children seem to be slowly losing it along with their father, if they ever had it at all. Do you have any familiarity with an acronym GAAP, G-A-A-P? Generally accepted accounting principles, yes. Okay, how did you become familiar with that acronym? Probably in Accounting 101 at Wharton. Okay, um, what do they teach you about generally accepted accounting principles in Wharton? Uh, well, I'm not an accountant, but that they are generally accepted. <laughs> Anything else? That's, that's pretty much what I remember from Accounting 101. So. <laughs> Have you told me everything you know about GAP? <laughs> uh, basically. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure I could come up with some creative uh, <laughs> stuff to kill time, but I'd be doing neither of us a favor in terms of educating ourselves. It's a good thing he's never had to really work for a living. Listen, do I remember every fact I learned in college? No. But if I was an accountant, or if I had gone to school for accounting, I probably would have remembered the basic standard set of accounting rules known as GAAP. Seems like if you're going to remember just one thing, that's probably the one to remember. But I guess I can't really fault him because he also thought Lululemon had bread. I don't know. Maybe the Lululemon near him is next to a Trader Joe's and he got confused. And now Eric doesn't seem quite as lost, but he is just as nonsensical. New York has the worst problems of any city arguably in the country. It's dirty, it's crime ridden. You've got illegal immigration problems all over the place. And this is what the attorney general spends her time on, going after a guy who has put more money and more assets and done more to shape an amazing American city than Donald Trump. New York is the worst. My father helped shape New York, which is one of America's best cities. He's got more conviction. I'll give him that. But the words don't really um, add up. The best city in America that my father helped shape is horrible. It makes sense if you don't think about it. No one's following you, fellas. Right now, trying to ban people from actually having discourse about politics. Uh, How un -American. Probably, probably shouldn't surprise any of us. Uh, but that's what it is. And I've been told by others that I would be able to go in. So they said we w were able to go in, then they said they weren't now that we're here. Wait, wait, saying, and the candidate that said you can't go in the spin room. They're telling me right now, Fox won't that. let me into the spin but room. That's what the American people Fox should know. News, this sir. is the kind of thing. They're telling they him, are. he works for security here, but they're telling him that I'm not allowed to go in there. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here. And Donald Trump Jr. didn't get an access pass to the biggest show in town, and he literally threw a temper tantrum at the backstage door. Junior and his Botox bimbo, Kimberly Guilfoyle, were banned from the spin room after Don Sr. skipped the debate. Guilfoyle was heard saying, how un-American, as Junior had his privilege card revoked. Because the candidates that they've been boosting while simultaneously trying to cut down Trump for the last, what, two years? Didn't perform as they had hoped. So they can have someone who can maybe be a representative of my father. Just like a few weeks ago when I was canceled after the first indictment, I was scheduled to go on. And about five minutes before I'm on, I found out I'm no longer on because apparently I wouldn't be a great surrogate to talk about my father's indictment. Just so we understand what we're dealing with here. So it shouldn't surprise any of us. And it's also why Trump was 100% right to not go to this debate. Exactly. It's beneath him. And when you know that you're walking into a setup because of exactly these kinds of circumstances, you understand exactly what's going on in mainstream media, even conservative. We've all seen some nut job throwing a fit out in public over some minor inconvenience and demanding outrageous amounts of compensation for their perceived plan and suffering. 
Don Jr. is like the guy who tries to upgrade an already free ticket to first class using his daddy's sky miles and gets rejected by the gate and then wants to complain that he'll never fly that airline again. What a moron. I like to knock the one side, but I got to call balls and strikes. This is no different than what we see from the Democrats. It's no different than what we're seeing from the Fulton County DA when they're trying to put a gag order on Donald Trump so he can't defend himself in court proceedings. And more importantly, to function as an intimidation tactic for anyone else who would defend him, where the DA there is then saying, hey, we're gonna add you people to the indictment if you take part in this. I don't know, guys, doesn't reek of democracy. All the people that have been screaming that for the last six or so years, especially during the Trump presidency, when I believe we had a lot more freedom uh, than we do now, or certainly since this administration's taken over, are strangely quiet. Don Jr. and Kimberly Gargoyle wanted to throw shade on the other candidates. They intended to create chaos and be Donald's little mouthpieces, and it was epic watching the two numbskulls throw a hissy fit as they got denied. The arrogance, privilege, and self-absorbed demeanor of these two jackalones is what makes their reaction to this rejection so hilarious and enjoyable to watch. Junior's voice started shaking like a nervous wreck, and he just couldn't believe that he was getting denied access. Instead of accepting the fact that he's not wanted, he wanted to force himself on everyone. The rotten apple didn't fall far from the tree in that regard. We've seen so many videos about Karens and their incessant complaining go viral. We've probably all had a thing or two to say about some of these jackaloons too. It's not every day that you get to witness these clowns get their justly deserved karma though. This is one of those karma moments where Don Jr. and Kimberly Gargoyle had their bubbles popped. After that epic humiliation, you would think that these two wouldn't show their ratchety faces in public again. Nobody wants the Trumps around anymore. The Trump privilege card has officially been revoked, and that is a fact.